and a new era for WWE as well, as Jade Cargill has, in fact, signed with WWE, and she is at the Performance Center. So I can't tell you for sure that she will be at NXT tonight, but uh, they definitely want you to think that she is going to be at NXT tonight. And uh, that could be as little as sitting in the crowd. Hey, look who's in the crowd. It's Jade Cargill. So I guess we'll find out what they do. We have got a bunch of ratings notes, including Collision doing very, very well this past Saturday night. And uh, there's a couple of notes on that that I want to mention. And then the return of Roman Reigns, the end of heels on stars that has been canceled. And of course, of course... The world-famous Raw Report. We have much to talk about here today. And we will be back in a moment to kick it off. Wrestling Observer Live. Very quickly tonight, NXT. Joe Coffey and Butch, NXT. Global Heritage Invitational Finals. Eddie Thorpe versus Dijak. Seeking revenge for that tree that uh, Dijak attacked with that belt. Strap match, by the way. Strap match. You know what I heard? What'd you hear? We're going to ask Lance about this tomorrow. I heard mm-hmm. that Impact Wrestling has signed one of those those matches where the fans get to strap the wrestlers. Oh, my. I don't know about this one. Mm. I don't know. We'll find out tomorrow what Lance has got to say about that one. What? How do you feel about this graph of strap matches? Keep them marks away. There? I mean... Never mind. Trick Williams and Joe matches, Gacy. Though? Well, there's a lot of them. Yeah, what's up with that? Well, hey, people like strapping. Did you watch that, that, going on? Watch that Brian Danielson match with Ricky Starks? Golly. Yeah. That was one of the best matches Brian Danielson ever had. Started Brian Danielson. Trend. Yeah, well. Think about that. <laughs> then we got Trick Williams and Joe Gacy. Gigi Dolan versus Blair Davenport. Bronco Neiman, Lucian Price versus Hank and Tank. Now that should be a strap match. Baron Corbin versus Josh Briggs. Mm. Carmelo and Elia sign their contract for no mercy. Thea Hale versus Danny Palmer. And we will hear from Tiffany Stratton. And we will hear from Becky Lynch. I hope yeah. Becky does a 14-second uh, a limerick so that people can get really mad because they <laughs> saw it on Twitter but didn't watch the show. That's my, uh. that's my highlight of uh, Tuesday night. And then Wednesday, we've got Dynamite with the contract signing with Swerve and Hangman Page. That should go off without a hitch. We will hear from MJF and Adam Cole. Julia Hart faces Willow Nightingale. And four of the men in the four-way tag match to determine the number one contenders for the AEW. (laughs) Do I even need to get started? (laughs) What do we need a number one contenders match for the AEW tag team titles for? If FTR is literally giving tag team title shots to anybody who wants it, why don't we just say for the next four weeks, these four teams are next in line for FTR. Especially when they've only pushed Aussie Open as a tag team worth anybody's attention in AEW besides FTR. So, And they're getting a title shot. Just why? Penta, Matt Jackson, Orange Cassidy, and Austin Gunn will be the four men Cockamamie Austin gun, I might add. Nay. Yes. Hey, before you move on here, Josh Briggs, I assume this is going to be a big breakout match. You mean the fornicator? Yes, the fornicator. No, yes. no, no. Jensen no. is the fornicator. No, he's not, you idiot. Wait, Josh Briggs was the fornicator? Josh Briggs he is the fornicator. the fornicator. That's right. The God, other one do you was... watch this show? Brooks Jensen is the virgin. The virgin, and still a virgin. Well, actually, we, we don't know. know. They haven't brought it up in, in like seven, eight months. I mean, who knows what happened with Kiana? <laughs> well, Josh Briggs, 6'8". He's 30 years old. Like, Jensen, second-generation wrestler, He's very young still. I think he's only like 22, 23 years old. But maybe this is the time that Josh Briggs at this point, I mean, what are you going to do with him? I think we've seen a lot with that team. And I like Briggs Br- and Jensen. I, I don't mind them as a team, but I'm actually looking forward to seeing Briggs on his own, actually see if you can do something with this guy because he can talk. He's a big guy. He's got a good look. He's not great in the ring, but he's certainly more advanced than a lot of people who are there because he's been there for so long. So I'd like to see him get a shot here and really break out against Baron Corbin. I hope it happens. 
Jade Cargill has officially signed with WWE. And uh, she is at the Performance Center. And here's the thing about the Performance Center. I mentioned this the other day. You know, when Randy Orton was seen at the Performance Center, you can get in and out of the Performance Center without being seen. If you are seen at the Performance Center, it is not an accident. And clearly, especially if you're in the parking lot, they want you to think that if you tune into NXT tonight, you will see Jade Cargill. Now, if it's me, which it's not, Mm -hmm. you know, she's going to be doing some training and she's not debuting on television tonight or next week or imminently. Now, if you want to put her in the crowd If you want her to make a special appearance, oh, hey, look who's in the crowd. It's that Jade Cargill lady. Well, that's fine. (laughs) But I don't think that she should be debuting and uh, in in running roughshod immediately. I think this should be something that we, you know, get her in. You know, they do things differently in WWE. I don't know if you're aware of this or not. They do things differently. And uh, I think that might might be good to maybe practice doing some of those things differently. Well, let me ask you a question here. I mean, the days of somebody sitting in the crowd at the NXT Premium Live event, oh my God, look who it is, those days might be gone. And we've heard a lot of chatter about they have been working diligently on creative for Jade. Is th- Considering what Nia Jax is doing, and you'll get to it during the Raw review, to me, I don't God, think help I would... Me. I don't think I would bother to do that, but the way Nia is running through everybody there, I mean, could it be possible that that's where Jade ends up to me? No. I think I would want Jade on the main roster. I I would rather see her have a long stint in NXT, but that's not going to happen. I can't realistically believe that that's going to happen. You want me to book this for you as a genius? Sure. Okay. Mental giant Brian Alvarez? This is simple, okay? okay? This is simple. They are pushing Rhea as the baddest and most dominant champion on the roster, male or female, they actually sit on Raw last night. Facts. Okay, that's what they're. That's that's the kind of gimmick that they're doing. Okay, this Nia thing, like everyone's like, oh my god, the Nia thing is like a thing to do to lead to a match with Rhea at the pay per view, where virtually assuredly Rhea is going to beat her. Okay, it's just something to do now. But does that what I would give do, you Jade? What I would do is I would leave Jade in NXT from now until the Royal Rumble, okay? Let her train, let her get in there every day. Hold let her... on, NXT or the PC? NXT and the PC. I don't care if she's okay. on the NXT roster, doesn't matter. On she TV? Can, she can run roughshod on people on TV, I don't care. Okay. Do the Jade Cargill gimmick. All but right. then she debuts in the uh, Women's Royal Rumble. She can win, who cares? And then it is uh, it is Jade Cargill and Rhea at a WrestleMania. That I gives like that. you October, November, December, January, February, March. That gives you seven months to get her ready for one match at WrestleMania with Rhea Ripley, which will more than pay for her deal if she's in a prominent match at WrestleMania. And uh, that's the way I do it. But do the people want to see her and Bianca? Well, at Bianca's taking time off, so at re- till WrestleMania they could do. I don't know how long. She just said she's taking time off. So, yeah, you could do that one if you wanted to. But I mean, to the me, point that, is, if they're ahead. pushing Rhea as the most dominant champion, male or female, then what they're looking for is another dominant female to oppose her. Right now, it's Nia. And, uh, you know, Nia will go on to lose. May not even, it could be Survivor Series. Well, they or did Raquel, Nia, and, and yeah, they, Jade, Yep, they did Raquel. Now they're doing Nia. Well, Jade is, is further on down the road. That's the way I think you should do it. Who do you think can fill that void in the middle? Because there's nobody from really NXT that can step up there right now with Rhea. Is it? I mean, do you do you mix up brands because you're in Survivor Series season, of course. and then that's the excuse to have Charlotte Flair or somebody to of do course. that match again with her? Okay. Or or she doesn't need to be defending the title all the time. Like she's a pivotal cog in the wheel of the Judgment Day. She's a star, that's for sure. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.